Well, it's mid-August and I wanted to give you guys a garden tour update on how everything has been growing this year. Everything seems to be about two weeks later than it normally ripens and grows. So hopefully we'll get a later frost because we're only about four more weeks till our average last frost date. Let's go take a look at the garden. Got these scarlet runner beans, which are blooming nicely. We won't get much beans off that, but I just plant them for the pollinators anyways. Down along the front here are all the banana peppers, which have done really awesome this year. Peppers I have a hard time growing, but there's tons of banana peppers here. All along the back here are a red cherry tomato, which they are getting close. Hopefully we'll get some red ones soon. Over on this side up front is my celery. I'm going to tell you guys, celery is very dramatic. It looks really nice, but if you don't water this for a day, it dries out, it just limps and falls over like it's dead. So tip, if you're growing celery, make sure you water it. On the back here, we have a few different types of tomatoes, and I have one that is just almost ripe. My first ripe tomato here. Uh, this one's a sun gold, so they're nice. One of the only tomatoes I actually really like to eat fresh. Then we also have, these are called a Brad's Atomic Grape. Here is a black cherry, and as you can see, they're starting to turn. And up here, these are a yellow pear. Again, nothing has turned yet, so hopefully soon. Here, these are the radish pods that are spent. I'm letting them go to seed. These peppers are my Golden California Wonder, and they're starting to do good. I've got, I've got some okay sized peppers. Back here, there's a pretty big one. So I could pick these green, but I'm gonna let them kind of go and see if we can get them to turn yellow. Some big marigolds yet to bloom. Hiding in amongst these marigolds are what's called a my, choc my sweet chocolate. I have a couple of them, nothing's turned again, but these are supposed to be like a brown chocolate colored. Here I have planted some lettuce seeds, nothing's come up yet. This I like to call my seed saving corner. It's got um, peas I'm saving for seeds, lettuce. And then in the corner here, I had planted two slicing cucumbers. So the longer cucumbers. And we're starting to get some good sized cucumbers. I'm actually hanging off the side over here, we have some. And they're kind of growing into the peppers, but I haven't really got much for the jalapeno peppers. We just had a really cold spring, but this one does have a few on there. So I'll be able to make a little bit of my cowboy candy. And the lettuce here is doing really good. Got some of the red romaine, which we really enjoy. Gonna get a nice head on that one. These are my poblano peppers, and this plant has actually produced some nice, decent sized peppers. So I'm gonna let those just ripen up a bit before I pick them. And then on this side are beans, which we have picked a ton of beans off. We've got, we've got purple beans yellow beans, spinach that went to seed really quick. I'm gonna pull that all out. And we just have some green beans. And these ones are called a dragon tongue bean, which these ones are really good. They don't pickle or freeze or store really well, but they're very good to fresh eat or just like quick stir fry in the pan. I just wanted to show the center bed here. I've just got some random flowers. And this is what I'm calling my Charlie Brown Christmas tree tomato. Oh, look at it. So, so we'll get one tomato off that. And there's another one here. They all turned into like Charlie Brown tomato plants. Over here to the wild jungle. Usually when the garden meets the peak, the weeds are at the peak and then you're busy harvesting everything. And in August, sometimes the garden just goes wild and you'll see there's tons of weeds everywhere but that's okay, I'm okay with it. Down here we have all the herbs, peppermints, and lemon balm, and catnip. And I'm just gonna let them all flower for the pollinators. I picked a bunch to dry for teas, so we're good there. And down here in this wild garden, we have all these pepper plants that I planted. Some of them might have one pepper on them, but they haven't been producing a lot. I did plant some peas in the back of all of these as a succession crop, so hopefully we'll get a little bit of peas this fall. As you can see, the beans just grew like crazy, taken over. Yeah, and these pepper plants. I did, like, the banana peppers do pretty good. This is a yellow banana pepper. 
and that one's just a sweet banana pepper. Grapes are doing good. I have lots of nice clusters and hopefully we'll get them nice and ripe before the frost hits. This is the wild asparagus bed and there's also some peas back in here which again I've let gone to seed and I will be collecting. Those are all my blueberry bushes. I still have to plant a couple. I have a few blueberries, but nothing's ripe yet. And in this wild crazy bed, we've got some green onions. This is a squash, a patty pan. Looks like we have one ripe in there. And some marigolds. And then these peppers are shishito pepper. Each plant has a few, so we'll get a one meal out of that. This is calendula here. It's nice, it brings in pollinators and then you can also use it for making oils and skin products. It's got lots of medicinal benefits. And then just the wild crazy jungle, mostly weeds. Some things I use and pick for medicinal things. I did pick some of the potatoes out of here, but there is still one box of potatoes. It did really well in the box. And these ones are just happy as can be, so I'll leave them. My cherry tree has grown a lot this summer. I got two cherries off of it. <laughs> Hopefully more next year. And then down here is my wild, crazy strawberry bed. In the middle here, these are a whole bunch of volunteer ground cherries. Just, I let them grow. We like the ground cherries. And you see a little bit of the asparagus coming up. This is what I was talking about with the wildness of the garden. I just don't have time to weed and harvest and can and do everything. So pick your battles. I just let the weeds go and I'll get what I can. And then come fall when there's a bit more time, we'll clean all the beds up, weed them all and prepare for next year. The tomatoes are looking good. These are my Scotia tomatoes. And as you can see, they're just now starting to ripen. Come in here and look, oh, look at that guy. So maybe another day with him, but these plants are definitely loaded and now we're just waiting for everything to ripen up so we can start harvesting. We've got to tie these guys back up. They just get so heavy, they fall over. These ones are the Roma VF. And they're looking really good. Again, this guy's starting to ripen up here finally, but we have a lot on here. I do need to do a bit more thinning here just to let the light in on those tomatoes so we can get them to start to ripen. Here's some oregano that's gone to seed. And then these are all more beans, the same dragon tongue, green beans, yellow beans, and some kale. We had no cabbage moths this spring and then they've come in like crazy. So you can see all this is, cab is damage from the little caterpillars. They, the moths lay the eggs and the caterpillars eat. But we'll, sh we'll let him eat on that one and we'll harvest the other ones. Or the crazy strawberry bed and the asparagus. And we'll walk down to the end there. I did plant here actually. This is fennel. So I did have a little bit of fennel that we planted. One little zinnia that came up, and that is calendula. The horseradish is growing pretty good. All those big leaves, those are the horseradish leaves. And then onto this bed. So we have onions, harvested a lot of these rainbow carrots, but there's still a few left in here. They were pretty good sizes. And then the tomatoes on the back. Again, nothing ripe, but they're starting. Like these are the pink boar. See the cool striping on that. They're gonna turn a pinky color. And these ones are the large barred boar. And these ones are the end are what's called the get stuffed. You can see they're pretty cool looking. So they'll actually be almost like the shape of a bell pepper and they're a little bit hollow inside so they're really good for stuffed tomatoes. These I believe are called a black from Tula. Beside that are a Paul Robeson. 
Everything just looks green right now. Hopefully by my next garden tour, we'll have a bunch of colorful tomatoes. And in front here, I have a bit of beets that we planted, which are growing nicely and we'll just let them do their thing. And then also we planted that okra. It's starting to grow little okras. So we'll be able to try those out. This is all my lettuce that's gone to seed. And a lot of these things that I let go to seed produce flowers, which bring in pollinators and insects. So it's really nice. This last bed we have all along the back are what's called the speckled Roman paste. They're gonna have a nice stripe to them. It'd be kind of neat once we get them to ripen. <laughs> and then I have some carrots in here growing away. These were my habanero peppers, but I have none. It's just been too cold every year for these guys. And in the front here again, we have the onions. Getting some good size to them. Little bitty one, big one. <laughs> this plant here that looks dead was actually cilantro that I let go to seed. And now these seeds, once I let them dry, are coriander, coriander seeds. So I'll be able to collect all these once they dry up. This is my ground cherry. He looks really sad, but we just need to give him a water. I haven't had a lot of rain. And one, one thing when you're growing in pots is you do have to water a lot more frequently than if you're growing in ground. Once they dry out and get papery is when they're good to harvest. And they're really good. They're a lot sweeter. I don't like tomatoes, but I really enjoy these. There's the old tulip bed all wild and crazy. And the wild, crazy warrior cat's bed. The yarrow at the back is just starting to bloom. And we've got some calendula. There's some thyme down in here. This is all borage, borage, which the pollinators like. You can't eat it. We haven't really ate much of it. Way down in here is some chervil. And all my poppies that they beautiful when they bloom they do not last long but now we'll wait for these to dry out and then we'll get the poppy seeds these are a hungarian bread poppy so we'll be able to use them for when i'm making some bread make some everything bagels <laughs> somewhere in there is my lavender there it is there here all these pots so little just dried up but down below the cucumbers are doing really good this is the lemon cucumber. Just starting to get some little lemon cucumbers on there. All up the back here, the cucamelon has actually done really well. There's lots of little tiny guys on here. We have been able to actually harvest a few. This is about how big they've been getting. And they're a nice little crunchy snack. Over here amongst weeds is the Armenian cucumber, which I don't have any on at all. Along the back is my hibiscus, which is actually starting to bloom. From here, it produces a really, really pretty flower. My celeriac is looking good. It's warming up a nice bulb. And we have calendula there, as well as some sunflowers I planted. They are not blooming yet, but we might get a little bit of a bloom before the summer is over. <laughs> this is where the potatoes were that we just dug up. Here's my wild and crazy garden. A lot of things have gone to seed and I haven't weeded in forever, but that's okay. We get what we get. <laughs> Here's the kohlrabi. I think it's about time to be picking. With... There are onions amongst that mess. If I get some time, I'll come and weed it because the onions still have a ways to go. But all these cabbages here, it's time to pick. The cabbage moths have gone to them. I never did cover anything up, but this guy is huge. He's so big. I'll definitely be making some sauerkraut, but if you have any other ways that you like to preserve your cabbage, let me know in the comments down below because I'd love to try it. We have some more big onions. Again, these are the onions I started from seeds. You will get a much bigger onion when you start it from seed. I'll show you my sets after they're not as big. All this garlic is ready to come up. As you can see, the bottom leaves have died. We'll be pulling that soon. And then we just have lots of broccoli that's gone to seed and cauliflower.
cauliflower going to seed. This kale still looks really good. We can still harvest off that. Again, we mostly just make kale chip. And we have a little bit of dill there. This is my row of tomatoes that I planted very late. Just, we'll see what we get. And then this is another row of beans, two different types of green beans. And they're just starting to grow their little beans. So I'll be using these green beans for a lot of freezing and pickling. And then in this row, I've actually planted some more carrots. So this is my fall planting of carrots. They can withstand a light frost. If we get an early frost before they're big, I'll just cover them. This is where we had the peas here and over in the other one and we've pulled them up. They stopped producing. It's peas don't do too well in the heat. But we've still got lots of carrots on the ground here. We've been pulling up some. There's some left though. And then these are the beets. Some of them have gone to seed, which I will leave. But we do have a lot of really nice beets in here. In this row, there's a couple nice nasturtiums. Again, these are edible flowers and leaves. A little bit of a peppery flavor. And down the middle here are all my rutabagas for my fall planting. And then these are all the cucumbers, which have done really well. They had a slow start, but they have been producing like crazy. I have been picking buckets and buckets of these. We've made pickles, we've ate them fresh. We're gonna be making some relish and a whole bunch more. This first row here is all what's called a national pickling, which I have been really happy with. They have produced a lot of really good cucumbers and even if they get too big they still taste really good because they will get too big on you if you miss them the second row was a can't remember the kind but there was a white spined one and then another burpless one and then this next row is all called a homemade pickle they've produced really good as well but they have not been as prolific as the national pickling this last row is called a biet alpha burpless and they've produced really well too. They did not have as good of a germination, but the plants that did grow have been producing a lot. We have all the dill back there. And these are all my onion sets, which as you can see, they just haven't gotten the size as the ones from seed. They still get big enough when you can use them for cooking and canning and all that. And then my next row are all my summer squash. I definitely need to get in here and pick. These are the patty pan squash, the yellow patty pan. I also have some green patty pans. And then beside that is a ton of yellow zucchini. It is our favorite. We move on to our green zucchini. Now I gotta step over here <laughs> to get to hopefully have another green zucchini and then at the very end is what's called the yellow crook which haven't been growing very big they're staying actually pretty small but we'll see how it goes in this last row are all my pumpkins these ones were called a spooky pumpkin we've got three on this one i believe one two there and one more over here on that side the back one there is called a howden pumpkin And we have the Howden pumpkin over here as well. And then on the end are the sugar babies. It's worked out really well on these pallets. We've just laid pallets underneath and the vines are all growing over them. So it's really easy to spot the pumpkins. This is our biggest guy here. And he's actually starting to turn orange already on the vine. That never happens here. There's the sugar baby. You can see it in there, one there. There's another one in here. And there's a bunch right here. And of course the pollinators are loving all this. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we have our three sisters experiment, which has been a good experiment. We have learned a lot. <laughs> we are getting some food see here got a little this is a acorn squash and 
we have the corn. This is the rainbow gen corn, so it takes a long time. But if we can get a good fall, we might be able to get some because as you can see, it's starting to tassel up top. And then we go down below and we've got some silks coming out. So now we just need to get a good pollination to get some little cobs. We also put the beans in here for the three sisters, the corn beans and squash. And these are the scarlet runners, which have been doing good. We're actually starting to get little beans on them. Beside the first patch was our second patch. This corn was started early and I kind of didn't plant it soon enough. So it was very short, but we have gotten some cobs. So we should get a little bit of sweet corn. It's very crowded down below. So we haven't gotten a lot of squash. And then this last patch is another type of corn I planted directly from seed and it's starting to tassel as well. I haven't seen any silks coming out yet. Oh, of course, there they are. <laughs> so everything's starting to grow. I just hope we get a late frost and everything will have a chance to ripen. In the front here, we have some butternut squash and some more pumpkins, just the sugar pie pumpkins. There's not really a lot of pumpkins growing but we do have there are a few so if we can just get a couple off each plant we'll be good there's my mid-august garden tour and as you can see a lot of stuff is growing we've been harvesting tons out of the garden lots of weeds there as well but in the next couple of weeks we're going to be pulling stuff and getting that fall garden finalized i hope your gardens are growing well and if you want to see what this garden looked like just five weeks ago check out my last garden tour from july thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time Bye.